and thanks for joining me. So I thought it was about time to do another um, Forgotten Fighting video. Um, I've been doing a series of videos on um, boxers who I feel have been overlooked um, for one reason or another. Not necessarily boxers that I believe were great or like all time greats, but just fighters that I think deserve for one reason or another more recognition. Some of the guys that I featured are Harry Wills, um, Young Stribling, and Len Wickworth. Now, in um, my last video, I spoke about, I, I can't remember if it was the last, but uh, I got feedback on the video about Len Wickworth, who was arguably the most prolific boxer ever, having, at least the most active boxer ever, having had well over 470 fights. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a guy called Nipper Pat Daly. And this was actually suggested to me by um, my new phone. Okay, I assume the guy doesn't want to use a real username, but that's fine. He watched my video and he suggested um, I talk about Nipper Pat Daly. Uh, actually, as it so turns out, there's a piece on Nipper Pat Daly in Boxing Monthly in the August 2018 edition. Just show you here. So if you subscribe to Boxing Monthly, um, the article is entitled Fact is Stranger Than Fiction. I don't have access to Box Rec at the moment, so um, the record that I'm going to state is going to be a little bit, uh, it, whether it's reliable or not, I don't know. But uh, then, uh, excuse me, uh, Nipper Pat Daly had some 119 fights, 99 wins, and only 11 losses. Now, the thing that stands out about Nipper Pat Daly, that word Nipper, is perhaps a nickname because he was uh, basically a child. Um, he's famous for being possibly the youngest licensed professional boxer ever. Although this has to be said, this was at the beginning of the 20th century when um, ethics was not so strong in sport. Um, to put things in context, this guy was rated in the top 10 world flyweights at the age of 15. Uh, he was a top flyweight contender at 15. He retired, I believe, in his 20s. He was born in Abercrave in Powys, Wales, in 1913, to uh, Irish and Welsh background. And his family moved to the Canadian mining town of Wayne, Alberta, in 1920. And it's there that he first took up boxing, or at least an interest in boxing. Back in Britain, um, he persuaded his father to allow him to get into the fight game and he began in a gym in the Marlborough Road in London by one professor, so-called Andrew Newton. Now, this trainer was a dubious character at best. Um, I suppose a bit like a lesser known Don King, well, trainer as opposed to promoter, but many critics said that it was basically exploitation. There's no question about it, this uh, young guy had real talent, but the, were, you know, he was fighting growing men at a time when he was still in his early teens. Very, um, very dubious. But he fought uh, flyweight, bantamweight, featherweight, lightweight, welterweight. He died at 75 in 1988. Now, interestingly, a book has just been written about him by his, um, let me get this right, his grandson. Um, Alex Daly and the, the book is entitled Born to Box The Extraordinary Story of Nipper Pat Daly by Pitch Bob Publishing in 1999 um, his life story like many fighters could be seen as less than glamorous but interesting um, I understand he took up um, boxing in 1921 and he retired in his 20s I believe in 1927, but like I said, I don't have access to box rec at the moment. I'll try and find out from the Wikipedia article. He stayed in touch with the sport after retiring. He died in Hastings, East Sussex, like I say, in 1988. But what's interesting about Nipper Pat Daly is the fact he was so young when he was a top flyweight contender. I mean, that's incredible. I don't know if he ever won a world title, but um, he was certainly a phenomenon, and he made appearances at the Covent Garden Sporting Club and the Premier Land in Whitechapel, which was two of London's major um, sporting venues. Mm -hmm. 
but among those who were critical not of Nipper Tuck Daly but of the training techniques and the fact that so much pressure was being put on the teenager was none other than the great Jimmy Wilde. And apparently when Jimmy Wilde raised his concern, presumably along ethical lines, um, the so-called professor told him to mind his own bloody business. So um, he comes across as a rather dubious character, this professor. But anyway, that's Nipper Pat Daly. Um, the conditions that he trained in were described as Dickensian. So that really says something. I don't think it would be legal today, put it that way. Nevertheless, um, he was a very talented young fighter, and I think he has to certainly rank as one of Britain's greatest flyweights. Um, I don't think he ever won a world title, but definitely, definitely a fighter worth mentioning. Nipper Pat Daly. Thanks for watching.